Now, let's look at something more interesting, something a bit more interesting. So app, I assume app is for apply or something like that. So app applies a list of functions to a list of values. So, so now we're getting into some really crazy stuff, okay? So what they're saying here, actually let, let's copy this in here uh, and, let's, uh, and let's run it. So let me just remove the comments here. So let me console log these things. First the first one, the second one, and the third one. Right, and let's look at what we get. So I messed up something with the, yeah, so sorry, that's syntax error. Yeah, so we get, as you could see here as well, right? But we get two, four, six, four, five, six, and then we get this tasty pizza, tasty salad, pizza, salad, and random, random. Right? But let's, let's, let's look at these one at a time. What we're saying is that, okay, app applies a list of functions to a list of values. So let's look at this. We've got a list of values here, and we've got a list of functions here. So we will take these functions and apply them to the list of values. And actually, let's look at the type definition here as well. We say we have a list of functions, right? So a list of things that transforms from A's to B's. Then we have a list of values, right? Things of type A, because that's what we want to transform. And then we transform that into a list of things of Bs using these transformation functions. Okay, well that makes sense, right? So, so multiply is something that operates on numbers, right? On A's, and A's here are, are, are numbers, right? It's a list of numbers. And add here is another function that operates on A's, or in other words, operates on numbers, takes numbers and produces some kind of B, which in, in this case here, of course, happens to be the same as A, of course, happens to be numbers. So what do we do? Well, we apply this list of functions to this uh, list of values. And let's just look at the output, right? Like we have one, two, three, four, five, six elements as output. We have three elements as input and two functions. So two times three is six, which is why we have six elements. So think about it. What we do is that we get the numbers one, two, three, and then the numbers one, two, three again, where the first three numbers are run through mul the multiply function, and the second three, or the, the, the remaining three values, or, or the second pass of these three values, are passed through the add three function. So let's just look at whether that's correct or not. So the first two would be times two, right? So actually, let's output the original, uh, or I mean, ah, the original is actually one, two, three, right? So the first number is one, times two would be two, two times two would be four, three times two would be six. And then the second one was that, that was add three, right? So when we add three to one, we get four. When we add three to two, we get five. And when we add three to three, we get six. So actually, that's, that's, it's not that strange. And, and if I would uh, remove backwards here to, to, the, to the comma so that we only have this single function now, right? So we have an array of this, of a single function, which is this multiply function, then we expect to get three elements out, right? We get two, four, six, because now we're only taking a single pass of this uh, value array or, or this array of values. And since it contains three, we get three. And if we add another one here, we of course get four values out. So, so that's that, right? I mean, we can tack on any number here. So let's actually say add one and then add another one, which is add two here. So now we have three functions. So we get three, so we get three times three values, which are nine, which is nine values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, oh, sorry, four, <laughs> sorry, four, three times four, so 12 values, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, so 12 values now. So, so, so that's all, all, all good, right? So we're sort of uh, duplicating the array uh, and, and running each function through all of the items in, in that array. So it's kind of like a map. Ah, so sorry, probably <laughs> this app thing, it, it's probably not supposed to, to, to indicate apply, maybe it's supposed to indicate map. I don't know, this probably has something to do with applicatives because here, the second signature here says uh, apply F, which probably refers to applicatives. But again, this is outside my scope of current knowledge. So we'll talk about this in a future video when I've actually successfully figured this out. So I hope you forgive me for that. But then then also, I mean, uh, hopefully you can see how this first thing works, how, how this signature works. But then we also have this signature. And that's, I think, uh, what they talk about here when they say, okay, r.app can also be used as an S combinator. So remember, we talked about the combinator. Let's actually look at this. Let's, uh, so if we Google S combinator, 
uh, we end up here, SKI Combinator Calculus. I think this is the right page, right? Here we can see that we, for example, have uh, the K Combinator and the S Combinator. So we previously talked about the K Combinator, right? Where if, if you have the, the function K of X and Y, then that is equal to X, right? So, so this is const, right? We're saying if, you, if K is a function and you get two parameters or you, you get past two arguments, X and Y, then the, the result of, of running this function would be X. Uh, whereas the, the S Combinator says that, okay, if, if you pass X, Y, and Z to S, then we will we will apply x to z. Let's make this bigger. We will apply x to z. So x is a function, and we run z through that function. But that gives us a function through which we run z through y. So so uh, think about this. Z is kind of the value here. So z is passed through the function y, but z is also passed through the function x. But applying z to x gives us a function and we will run the application of z th through y through this first function. Let, let's go back to Ramda here. I, I think hopefully it makes more sense if we look at it here. So we have these three arguments, x, y, z here, but here, here we call them abc because the, the types abc. So, so when given a function, ah, oh, sorry, this is actually not the, the, the x, y, z, sorry. This is the x, this is the y, and, and this is the, wait, actually I'm super confused. So let's, let's read this here again. S is a substitution operator. It takes three arguments. It, it takes three arguments and then returns the first argument applied to the third, right? The first argument applied to the third. The first argument applied to the third, right? Z, oh, maybe I'm saying application in the wrong way. I'm sorry about that. We, we apply the function X to Z. Sorry, that's the way I should, I, sh I should express it. So we run Z through X. Sorry if I've been saying this incorrectly before. So we apply X to Z. So, so the first argument applied to the third argument, which is then applied to the result of the second argument applied to the third. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, we were describing this correctly before. We, uh, X is a function and we run Z through that, but that gives us a function. And then we run that function on whatever is returned from running Y on Z or applying Y to Z, running Z through the function Y. Let's see if we can figure this out here. So, so let me make the connection in a moment. Let's first just think about this. So first here, we have a function from A to B to C. Here we have a function from A to B. And here we have a function from A to C. So let's try to think about this in relation to this example here. So the first one should presumably be the function from A to B to C, right? Which makes sense because concat, so now we're at app, let's look at concat, right? So concat is a function that takes a list of A's and then a list of A's and then produces a list of A's. But uh, of course, uh, again, as we said before, when we have, <clears throat> when we say A, B, C, they can be the same, but they're not necessarily the same. When we say A, A, A here, however, of course, all of these A's are referring to the same type. So this uh, list of A, list of A, list of A, this is an instance in some sense, or, or this, this matches the pattern uh, A to B to C. So here we have list of A, list of A, and list of A uh, for the case concat, right? So, so that describes concat. But then let's think about upper here. So R dot upper, right? The second thing here is from something from A to B. And that's true as well, right? We can say, so upper, uh, let's look at that as well. To upper takes a string and produces a string, right? Let's go back to app. And again, of course, uh, just because we're saying A to B doesn't necessarily mean that A's and B's are different. They, they could be, that's the point. But here we have string to string when, when we have upper. So we take a string and then we upcase that string. We make it uppercase. So that's that argument. But then, oh, of course, sorry, this is, this is, the, this is why I got uh, confused. What we get back is a new function. So we here have a function that when we apply, when we pass an A, or I, I should say, we pass this argument, and then we pass this argument, and then we get back a function that when we pass an A, we will get uh, a C. And, and, and the confusion was around that the last A that, that is not really shown here, maybe it is, maybe I'm just reading the types incorrectly, that's, that's the last Z here. Or maybe it's again because of the parentheses and how they're, they've structured the currying. 
But essentially, <laughs> so, so, so let's dig into this. The reason they're using concat here is in, in this example is because strings are also concatenable. So strings as in, uh, let's say Haskell, for example, you can think of as lists of characters, right? So string isn't, so in Haskell actually, I mean, a, a string isn't necessarily a, a, a special type, it's just a list of characters. But uh, of course in JavaScript, I mean, in my understanding, it's a, it's a type, but when, when you're using Ramda here, you can actually concat over strings you can map over strings for example so it's pretty convenient so they're saying concat right and concat here of course JavaScript is dynamically typed so so we can't say what type concat here is inferred to specify uh, or sorry <laughs> so so here in this particular case concat wants strings because we want to run them through to upper or if you think about duck typing a concat here wants to get something that is too operable that supports the two upper operation which uh, probably then would be a string. So if you were in a language that inferred the types, the compiler would infer that concat here refers not to any old concat, but a concat where a is of type string. Uh, but again, I mean, this is just, we're just thinking about this. This isn't, of course, inferred because it's dynamically typed. But concat here is of type from string to string to string of course, right? Because we have a list of characters, and then we concat it with a list of characters, and we produce a new list of characters, which is the concatenation of both of these lists of characters. And to upper here is something that takes a string and produces another string. And then lastly, we get back a function that takes a string and produces the C here, which we, we, which we, which we inferred has to be a string because this function is a, a, a string to string to string. So if, this, if C here is a string, then this C here, of course, also needs to be a string. So, so this is a bit messy, but it's actually not that strange, right? What we're doing is that we're saying, okay, pass the value that I'm passing last here right this in this case z pass z to the first function uh, a or sorry uh, x here so we pass z to x right we pass z to x here so we say concat with ramda so that gives us a new function that expects the second argument right and, that, and that's when we get this function from b to c it wants a b and it will produce a c then on the on the inner side here yz right we say take the second argument that's a function and apply it to the last argument. And the last argument here, of course, is this A, or this thing of type A. So, so we apply this to the second argument, which is this function, right? But that won't give us a new function, that'll just give us a string. So when we say to upper on a string, that will give us a string. And that's why we have this. We, ta we take something of type string and we produce something of, because it's to upper, of type string. But hypothetically, this is why it's A to B. It could be of a different type. And then doing both of these things, right? Uh, applying both of these two arguments gives us a function that takes something of type A uh, and produces something of type C. And that's sort of the last part here, I guess. I'm not, yeah, it's not super visible, but if you think about it this way, uh, this first thing, we applied the A to it, or we applied something of type A, but then we have a function that goes from B to C. And this second one, we, we uh, made, we applied something of type A in order to get something of type B. So now we have a B that we can apply to this function that goes from B to C. So if we take that B and apply it to the function at B to C, then we get something of type, of type C. And that's how we end up going all the way from an A to a C, right? So, so we pass in this thing of type A, this thing of type A here, right? In here, so we get a B to C, but then we also pass it in here, so we get a, a, a B. And then we take this B and pass it through B to C so that we get a C. <laughs> So, so it's a bit confusing, but it's probably actually pretty useful. So let's look at their example. I mean, their example, uh, actually, let, let's, let's begin by looking at what happens when we... Oh. So actually, let's, let's begin by looking at what happens when we run this. So what, we, what happens when we run this? Ah, oh, sorry, we didn't actually talk about the second example here. We can, we can talk about the second example in this moment, but now we're, uh, or in a moment, but now we're looking at this, this last example here. So we're looking at this last output here. So the last output that we get here is that we get Ramda with the first letter not changed, right? Let's actually, let's make this total, all lowercase to make it simpler, right? So we first have lowercase Ramda, and then we have uppercase Ramda in the same string, right? It's been concatenated into the same string. So think about what happens, right? We're saying 
The first argument is an A to B to C, right? That's concat. So we're passing Ramda into concat and producing something that will be concatenated with Ramda. But then we're also passing Ramda into to upper in order to make it to uppercase Ramda. And then we pass that through this first function. And that's how we end up uh, with what we have in the end. So, so if you think about it, you, you can think about it uh, this way. It's like we're saying concat uh, Ramda, and that gives us a function that we then apply to R to upper of Ramda. I think this should give us the same thing. Let's let's look at that. Yeah, so that gives us exactly the same thing, right? So I mean, if we would make a naive implementation of this, uh, let's say it's the S combinator. So we take an X. Uh, actually, let's do it that way. I mean, that would be interesting. So we take an X and a Y and a Z, just to express it in the same sense as the the, the sort of Wikipedia page. Then we would say uh, it's X applied to Z, which gives us a function that we then apply to Y applied to Z. That should give us the same thing, right? So then we can say, instead of doing this manually, we do the S combinator on R dot concat, and then we pass R dot to upper, and then we pass Ramda. I guess that would be it. Yeah, that did work. So let me uh, undo this back just so you can see that we have now three versions producing the same thing. Of course, I mean, the implementation, I mean, we, we can actually just jump over here to the to the GitHub page. I mean, clearly the implementations for these functions are a bit more sophisticated, but as I've been saying before, they're they're not massively more sophisticated. It's, a, it's actually a super nice open source project. So I think it's pretty interesting to dig in and, and read some of these, uh, the, some of the implementations for, for these methods. So definitely do that if you're interested. So it's not, I mean, it's something along these lines, but it's not, uh, of course, not exactly like this, but, but not super different different either. So anyways, uh, we've now implemented that ourselves. So when could this be useful? Let's, let's think about that. It's like, if you have, you can actually think of it this way. If you have a function that you want, so you have some kind of function that you want to run your data through, and, and that function depends on the data. But what you want to run through also depends on the data. So maybe, I mean, let's, let's just very quickly think of an example. Let's say we have uh, a, a cat which has a name, which is Miffy. And then we say, so, so maybe then we could use this app, right? We, we would say, or maybe let's, let's, let's add something more actually. Let's say age uh, is two. Now, of course, this will be a bit contrived as well. Well, let's, let, let, let's, so let's do it this way. Let's do something like this. Let, let, so let's say, I'll just call this object because I don't have a, a sensible name for it. But let's say, so data is uh, hello. Uh, and let's say reps is uh, three, for example, right? So, so I mean, this is a pretty stupid, but hopefully you can see, see how, how this would potentially be useful. So I think there's something like a repeat function, right? So like repeat takes an A, an N and gives a list of type A's, right? So here's the constant, here's the number of repetitions, and then you get a, a list of all of those content, constants, right? So here they pass high, and then they pass five, and then they get a, a, a list of all the all the repetitions. So so actually, I mean, we could just say r dot repeat here, and then in the second one we say r dot uh, prop, and we get uh, the, 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 the property uh, data, of course. So this, oh, sorry, the other way around. Here we get uh, reps, and sorry, here we should say r dot repeat. Ah, but I, now I'm repeating the whole uh, object. Uh, but le yeah, let's look at that first. So no way, this didn't work. Yeah, sorry, because I, of course I forgot to actually apply it to the object. So we apply this function to the object, and then we yeah we repeat the data three times, right? So we're performing a function, but the way we perform this function depends on 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 the data. Maybe we could. I mean, I, I was really interested in. Uh, repeating the word hello rather than yeah so I mean actually here we haven't talked about pipes yet but I mean what you could do is you could pipe here so you could say r dot pipe r dot prop uh, data and then repeat we'll talk about pipes later but if you do that you get hello 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 
Right? So, so hopefully you, you can see how this is actually potentially useful. There's another function called converge, which we also talked about in the uh, introduction video. And, and, and that's fairly, actually, <laughs> surprisingly often I find that to be useful because you want to sort of perform some kind of operation, but your operation depends, or some kind of function, but your function depends on something within your data. So you need to sort of apply your data both to the function that you want to perform in order to, to sort of partially apply the data to that function so that you can get a new function which is specialized for your context but then you also want to apply the data uh, so, so that you can or sorry uh, apply the function to the data to the original data or some aggregate of the original data <laughs> it's probably turned out a bit confusing but 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 if you th think about this example uh, hopefully it kind of makes sense i mean if we, if we didn't have uh, this app it'd probably be a bit more difficult because if you just think about it if we just did the pipe we would say uh, r dot pipe r dot prop uh, data and then we would say r dot repeat right and then we're here and then remove this the problem now is that this is of course a function where we've applied the data to repeat but we don't have uh, the reps we, we we don't so we need to pass uh, three to this also but we don't have the three anymore because we don't have this object anymore because in this pipeline as we're sort of going down in this pipeline where we're first uh, where we're first uh, getting the property data or, or sorry actually I should say here at this moment where we extract the data and then go onwards in the pipe we've lost the original object right so you could solve this like looking at lenses or something like that but that's a, a totally different story that we'll get to later but yeah I mean because of that we need some way of of not just looking into the data or focusing in on the data uh, but also to, to maintain access to the original object. And this is when the, the S combinator or uh, essentially why yikes, what was it called here? Let me undo backwards so I remember app, right? Ah, app. So app or, or the app function of, of Ramda. Next one.